Hi, my name is Sean Bonley with IBM. I'm part of the Advanced Technical Skills Team located out of Dallas, Texas. And I'm about to perform an automatic system failover between sites using PowerHA System Mirror for AIX Enterprise Edition with XIV replication. But before I actually perform the demonstration, let me give an overview of my configuration. This slide shows both the hardware and software used to perform this demonstration. I have two sites configured, A and B, two IP networks. I'm using AIX61 TL8 SP1, PowerHA Enterprise Edition 712 with Service Pack 1, and the XIV CLI is version 244. I have two XIVs, one allocated to each site and allocated to each host within the site. This is the serial number for each XIV. They are using microcode 1120. Uh, what you see here is something that is unique to Enterprise Edition 712 specifically. It was the first version to introduce this, is that we actually have configured what's called a linked cluster. And a linked cluster has a dedicated repository disk allocated to each site. So these are truly two separate LUNs. They are not replicated through XIV replication. They're their own independent disks. Our actual shared data disks are called HA3 and HA4. This is their names both within the XIV itself and actually on the AIX cluster nodes. Uh, we changed the name of them by using the rindev command on AIX to make it show up that way as opposed to uh, the hdisk name. Here is the overview of my cluster topology. This is the output from CL Top Info. Again, I've got two nodes, two networks. I have two interfaces on my Ethernet network, one interface on my XDIP network. And something I mentioned before was the repository disk being allocated to each site. Well, that also means you have a multicast IP address unique to each site. So you can see those listed up here as well. Here's my resource group configuration. I have an asynchronous resource group, online on home node, fail over to the next. I'm telling it to fail over. It's really just to... Uh, prove that it worked. It's not actually going to be part of the demo. The demo is actually just going to show the initial failover. We're not actually going to bother to fail it back, but it's uh, definitely an option to do so just by restarting the cluster. In this case, node 11 is my primary node. Node 10 is the backup. I have a service IP address. I'm not really going to show the service IP address. It's not important to the demonstration. In my case, since my sites are actually both on the same IP network, I can use the same service IP between the two sites. In most site situations, you're actually going to have two separate service addresses, one unique to each address. It's actually called a site-specific service IP address. So we can have service A and service B, uh, one unique to each site. The original configuration actually had that, but we took it out to streamline the configuration. We had both synchronous and asynchronous configured. Uh, we're actually only going to demonstrate the asynchronous option. However, the configuration is still 99% the same, regardless of which one you use. It's a matter of changing the option within the XIV when you establish the relationship and start the replication, along with making the corresponding change within the PowerHA menus, and I'll actually show a part of that. So I have a volume group called Test Async VG. I have a mirror group, which is the same thing uh, as a consistency group, but Async Mirror Group uh, is a replicated resource defined to PowerHA. And these are the three pieces that are unique to configuring XIV replication. Uh, using Enterprise Edition, there's separate scenarios that we actually define storage agents. And what the storage agents definition consists of are the IP addresses, 
and the username and password required to perform the command line operations remotely on the storage unit. The next piece is to find the storage systems. We actually have one for each site. We have XIV 13188. I actually call this one XIV3. I also have one for site B that I call XIV4, but this is the serial number is what is matched up to the vendor specific identifier. The last thing is the mirror group itself. You can see that I have both of my storage systems, the ones I just created, site A and site B. I have mirror mode asynchronous, and my vendor specific ID in this case is what is the name of the consistency group as far as the XIV is concerned. And I'll actually show that on the XIV GUI output in just a second. And then my recovery action is automatic. The two options are automatic or manual. For additional information on configuring XIV replication with PowerHA Enterprise Edition, the standard PowerHA version 7.1 pubs do actually cover it. However, we are working on a new 7.1.2 specific Red Book that actually the demo that I'm about to show is an environment that was used while writing the Red Book. I also have a few additional demonstrations out on YouTube under PowerHA Guy and feel free to follow me on Twitter as PowerHA Guy. I don't send out very much. I usually only just send out new support information and the occasional nugget of information that is uh, PowerHA related. So with that, let me switch over to our screens to show our environment. My putty session here with the green text is actually node 11, which is the primary node. You can see up top, this is just verifying what I said in my slides of the hardware and software. I've got 6181. I've got 712 of HA SP1. And what I'm showing here is that my disks that I'm using, HA3 and HA4, truly are separate LUNs. Now, if I look at them just with LSPV output, the PVIDs are going to be the same, but they're the same because they're replicated. So it replicates everything. So the way that we can see that they truly are separate devices is to pull up the unique ID of the disk. So right through here after that 27, if I look at HA3 on the other side, I can see that the numbers are different. So this shows me that they are indeed separate lines. Now to correspond with that, looking down here at the XIV GUI, you can see on my XIV4, it currently is the master, which is usually the primary source volumes, and they are named the same. This is just for ease of administration, naming them HA3 and HA4. You can see that they have a remote volume of also called HA3 and HA4, but it's on my other XIV. In this case, I call it XIV3, but you can see it list over here on the far end for remote system. Now, if I go back over here, node 10, you can see I have my test async volume group, but you'll notice that it's not active. Uh, that's actually normal in a site failover situation. With local HA and something like fastest takeover, it's normal to actually see both of it, um, both sides active in concurrent mode. But in a site replicated scenario, it's only active on one site. So on node 11, it's active in concurrent mode, full read write access. It's not active at all on the failover node. Now, my shared volume group of test async VG has this file system of it in it of test async. And within this test async, I have a little test application script running called test app that all it does is it writes the host name and date every second to this file. 
it's only just to generate some I.O. to have some kind of writes going uh, as my application. If I look, I can see that I, I have it running. And what I'm going to do is actually tail the log on another screen. So you can see here that it's writing every second. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to prove that after a failover occurs that I have most of the data. Now, I said most of the data. It's most of the data because I'm doing asynchronous replication. There is a chance that it could be a few seconds behind. Again, if you look down at the XIV GUI, you see this RPO setup of one minute. So it could be up to 60 seconds behind. However, in my tests that I've performed, since I really don't have a, a significant amount of I.O. being written here, I've only had up to about one second of discrepancy uh, in my tests. But this is just to show that everything that's being written to one truly is being written to both. And after the failover completes, I will check this file on node 10 to see what its contents are. So I'm tailing the log here, and on node 11, I'm ready to halt the node to perform a hard failover. Now, what I like to do is a reboot minus Q, and actually before I do that, I'm going to run a cluster status utility called QHA. It's a free utility you can download off the internet. So you can see that my cluster is stable. It says online secondary. All online secondary means is that that's going to be the target that it fails over to. And it's online stable on 11. You can see test async and the physical volumes. So now on node 11, I'm going to do this reboot minus Q. Has the same effect as performing a halt, but then I don't have to go back into the HMC and restart the partition. If I look over here, where I was tailing my log, I can see we finished at 2250.37. So that's what I'm going to compare against. Now, if I look back over on my cluster status, I can see that it's detected that the other node is down. It's not responding. And it has started the takeover. A uh, nice thing about this tool is I can see the uh, events that are running uh, on the side here using the E option. If I look down here at the bottom on the XIV, GUI, I can now see that the role has already swapped from master to slave. So the replication swapping has already occurred. It's done the flip. It's still waiting to acquire the resources on 10. Still says acquiring. I'm getting, okay, now saying that it's stable. So it's online and stable. If I look, my volume group is online now in concurrent mode. If I do a DF, I can see that test async is there. So if I change over to test async, let's check the contents of the file. And if I go to the bottom of the file, the last thing I see is 225037. So in my case, even though it happens to be asynchronous replication, the data truly is in sync. But remember, there is a chance that it can lag behind. But another indicator, the fact that the XIV itself says that the RPO is OK, um, it would say something called RPO lagging if there was you know, a few seconds of it lagging behind. So in our case, everything is consistent. So with that, I'm going to conclude this demonstration. If you have any questions about this demonstration or any other demo that I have, or if you have suggestions about maybe other demos you'd like to see, if there's the possibility that uh, I can perform it, I'm willing to give it a try. Feel free to send me an email at sbodily at us.ibm.com. Thank you.